gym and then kicked me out. But the uh, book of Ephesians is one of the greatest, I, I think, as far as the testimony of the grace of God. Amen. About God's intervening power upon fallen men. Amen. We are ungracious people in our day. I was talking to Brother James or Brother, I forgot your name already, so Paul. <laughs> talking to Brother Paul today and we're living in a generation where we're more toward of if a man falls, if a woman falls, if a woman messes up, there's a wall somewhere that we're willing to never hide the wall. Yeah. But I want you to know tonight that if it was up to all of us, none of us would be sitting in the church pew. That's right. Yeah. Amen, Amen, brother. That's right. Matter of fact, if everybody knew what everybody did, yeah. everybody wouldn't want to have to do nothing with everybody. <clears throat> Amen. Right. 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 You're right. Come on, brother. And that's one of the greatest things about God's amazing grace. Amen. 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 I'm a workmanship. That's right. Amen. I'm Amen. sitting there being molded in the hands of a potter. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, the lady, the young lady that the Lord put in my life, we went down to a place called Potter or Jug, Jugtown. It's right outside of Albemarle, North Carolina. They make the, the clay there is, is is a special type of, of dirt, and they make that dirt there in Jugtown with clay, and they sell clay pots and plates and things all over the world. They got to take us into this little room. This woman was making this pottery. She'd take it, she'd beat it, she'd slam it down, and she'd continue to beat that clay. She'd mold that clay. She'd take a little tool, and she'd twist that tool around that clay to pick it up, and she, again, she'd take it, and she'd pound that clay. I need to be pounded every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. amen. Yeah. amen. But I tell you, one of the greatest things that I think is a blessing, and I think is unbelievable, is the patience that that potter has. Yeah. So when the jug don't turn out the way that the jug should turn out, he ain't done with the jug. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But I'll tell you one of the most crucial elements that didn't take me long to figure out that that pottery needs is water. Yeah. And in your Bible, typology is the Word of God is a picture of water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You and I are absolutely nothing right. without this book. Amen. 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 I don't care how big your spiritual badge is tonight, you need this book. Yeah. yeah. Amen. I don't care how much vengeance you seek and want to disregard grace, you still need this book. Amen. And I'm thankful tonight for the book. To have Amen. a copy of it in my hand. Ephesians chapter 1, yeah. verse 1. If you're willing and able, I want you to stand with us tonight. <coughs> Brother Ann Paisley made the statement, and I agree with what he said. He said, in every preacher's lifetime, every church ought to know what a preacher's against. And I'm against the Pharisee. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I'm all for grace, and I'm against every Pharisee that ever walks in shoe leather. You know, I just want you to clear my standing on that. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you. Peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world we should be holy without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. If correctly read in our text this evening, Ephesians chapter 1, Verse number 1 through verse number 6. Heavenly Father, thank you for saving me. I thank you for loving me and I thank you for your patience with me. 
Father, there's things in each of our lives this evening that all of us have hidden in our hearts. Yes, Lord. Amen. There's things, Father, that we all deal with on a daily basis that, God, that we're ashamed of. Yes. And I pray and I ask you, God, that this week that you'd help us to get some things right with you. Father, one more time, will you be merciful to us? One more time, God, will you make your grace evident? I pray for the Pharisee, God, that you'd shut their lips of clay and help them see their self in their life and standing with your word. Amen. Father, for us, Lord, that are there in the dirt and the stones are being dropped and ideologies are being cast upon us and in our hearing, I pray and I ask you, Lord, that you'd help us to learn and lean upon your grace more than we ever had before. It is your grace that's brought us this far. Yes. Father, I trust that it will be your grace that will lead us home. We love you and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for first loving us. And it's in Jesus' name that I only can pray. Amen. You can Amen. receive Amen. this morning. This evening. As I mentioned, the book of Ephesians is about the amazing grace of God. I don't know this evening we're living in a generation where men think at some point or time that when it comes to salvation, that they want to give credit to themselves. Men want to give an idea and want to present an idea anymore that somehow, some way, they had some type of dealings with them becoming to God and them becoming a Christian. But in Ephesians chapter 2, he says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, I don't know what you think about that, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to read much into that verse. A dead man is dead. Yeah. There's absolutely no movement in a dead body. Amen. There's no valuable, there's nothing profitable of a dead corpse, but he says, and you hath he quickened. You have to come to where you were and breathe life I into you. Amen. The same life that he breathed into Adam is the same breath that he graciously has breathed into you and me as fallen men and fallen women with a demonic nature. Amen. You and I have seen him we're on the slippery slope to hell and God had come to where we were and breathed grace right. and breathed life into us. Amen. Amen has brought us into harmony with grace. Amen. I want to take my stance and say that I don't like labels. I want to preach tonight on being appointed to grace. Don't leave this place tonight thinking I'm a Calvinist. I want to look at this thing tonight in a biblical manner. If you're out and divide the word of truth very long, they'll label you whatever they want to label you. Yeah, I am. But I want to look at this thing tonight as being appointed to grace. And I find that really in our text tonight, there's really no interesting other way to look at it than Paul says, let me start with myself. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Paul says, here is my letter of recommendation. Here is the letter that I'm passing. I am the penman of this book. And it's hard to understand and it's hard to explain something that you absolutely have no dealings with yourself. But Paul is saying, I want to put myself at the forefront of the book and say, I know what it is to be in harmony with God. I know what it is to be familiar with the amazing grace of God. Praise the Lord. I want to say something tonight about grace. Grace is not a temporary mood that you get over. <laughs> yeah. Amen. 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 Grace tonight is not a fly by night fairy tale. Grace is uh, is no is no greater attribute tonight or no greater nature than that of the same mercy of God. It's no greater than His peace. It's no greater than His love. God the Satan has the attribute of grace and it's co-equal with every other attribute Amen. that he possesses. And I'm thankful that grace tonight will not cease to exist because my God will never cease to exist. Amen. Amen. I've been appointed to grace. Grace never apologizes. That's right. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Grace never has apologized for anything. This is just my introduction. I don't know how far in 
Ephesians chapter 1, I'm going to get tonight. I'm just going to hit the high parts that God gives me. Amen. And if you want to label me, that's fine. I'll take the label and I'll go back to calm over, but that's going to be all right. <laughs> Grace never has apologized. You say, preacher, what are you saying? You and I were just like the woman that was called in the very act of adultery. Yeah. You and I still get to the place where we'll mess up. And if the brethren, God help if the brethren ever find out, they'll let our hide in the barn door. Yeah. But grace tonight when it forgives you. Grace when it picks you up. And grace when it cleans you. Grace never one time has said, I'm sorry for rescuing your sorry hand. Grace has never apologized. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Grace never apologizes. Grace doesn't make excuses. Preacher, what are you saying? Grace does not ever tell you why it can't come to where you are. There's only one sin tonight that will send a man to hell and that's blaspheming against the Holy Ghost of God. Grace tonight has never met a path that it was stricken by. Grace tonight has no regrets. There's people, when you mess up and you make a mistake, they'll say, Lord God in heaven, I wish I'd have never met that, brethren. Yeah. Uh -huh. You and I live a life full of regrets. You and I look back at our life and said, if I'd have just talked a little different. Yeah. If I'd have just acted a little different. If I'd have went somewhere else and done something else. If I'd have just put myself in a better circumstance. If I'd have handled things better, I wish... I can go back and change some things, but grace ain't got no regrets. Grace don't look at you and me and say, I wish that they'd have done better at fixing their scars. Yeah. Amen. Grace just says, bring your scars. Right. Amen. 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 Grace has no regrets. Can I tell you tonight, and this is the hope that you and I should have, grace provides an escape. Grace provides an escape. When there is no way for the brethren to give you advice and there's no way for the brethren to help you, Grace will say, I got an exit for you. Yeah. Yeah. Grace will say, when it seems like that there is no way, when every bridge is burned, Grace makes an escape. Yeah. Amen. And I tell you, Grace is always necessary. Yes. Amen. Grace is always necessary. Your temper and your attitude and how you live your life ain't always necessary. Grace always finds a way to fit into the picture. Grace always finds a way, and grace is always able to fit itself in the circumstances of life. Grace is always and always will be necessary. Can I tell you, grace, don't seek an applause. Amen. I tell you what we want to do. We want to look back, and I'm not against worship, I'm not against giving homage to men, but I'm gonna tell you we put a lot of praise and a lot of stock in what men do. I'm going to tell you, those men wouldn't be what they were if it was not for the grace of God. Amen. 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 Churches would not be what they are if it was not for the grace of God. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something that grace does. You and I want to go back and put our arms around somebody when success is going fine and everything's hunky-dory and everything's working out good. And we want to be looked at as if we're the good little boy and we're the good little girl and Everybody likes us, and we are the one that was there in the ditch with the brethren. Grace ain't never sought out applause. And if you're right with God, if I'm right with God, we're not seeking applause either, because all of us tonight are candidates of grace. Amen. 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 I didn't come to grind an axe, but I sure do like grace tonight. Grace don't seek approval. And I tell you, Grace didn't ask legalism if it was all right to come and save you. Amen. Amen. Grace didn't ask the liberals if it was all right if they forsook their color and book and come to where they was either. <laughs> Grace tonight is always not worried about the approval of men. Nor does it seem, Grace didn't ask the law if it was okay if it come into the picture. Yeah. Matter of fact, the law just embraced everything that Grace stood for. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, you and I this evening ought to thank God that grace don't seek an approval. You and I want the approval of men. I know what I've messed up, friend. And you know when you've messed up. Yeah. And you know when you've made mistakes. I'm going to tell you, thank God Almighty, grace tonight knows every bit of that junk. But grace does not seek approval. Amen. Amen. To forgive you and me. Amen. 
Understand, I'm not again. I don't believe in turning the grace of God into a lascivious right. receiver. Amen. Amen. Grace is not a license to sin. No, it's not. Right. But you and I, as individuals, we are sinful creatures. Yes. We're a mess. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God We're a mess. Amen. 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 We are dysfunctional. We are crooked. It doesn't matter where you're from and who you know. Friend, you're just as crooked as I am. That's and right. you need grace just like I need grace. Amen, Luke. Grace don't seek an approval. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, grace will change your apparel. Amen. Yep. Preacher, right. what are you saying? I'm not just hitting long dresses and a red tie and a white shirt. Grace will change your, your sinful nature and put a rope of righteousness on you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You ain't got to worry about looking sinful in the eyes of God no more. He has clothed you with a robe. When that prodigal son come home, the father put a robe on him. I will tell you, friend, the Father, every once in a while, I'll take a journey to a far country, and the Father reminds me that grace will have a room for you. Amen. 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 You don't belong to yourself, friend. You belong to Him if you're a child of God. That's right. Amen. Grace will change your apparel. Grace will construct your course. And I tell you, you don't go to the same place as you used to go. Right. I'll tell you this, when you fall and you mess up, you ain't going to want to go back that way. Right. Amen. Right. It'll change your course. Yeah. Grace will never be arrogant. I told Brother Paul, when you and I were that man there in the niche, and the religious leaders come by, some of them probably looked over and said he should have walked on the other side of the road. Yeah. Some of them should say, well, you shouldn't have been walking by yourself. Well, who else would have walked with them down a road full of thieves? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you, grace is not arrogant. Grace this evening will never hold anything over your head. Yeah. That's right. <coughs> Amen. We have a generation, I'm going to tell you, I want, I want, if, you're, if you're under the age of 18, I want you all to stand up. If you're under the age of 18, stand up. Stand up. Now, I know we're here for camp meeting, but I want to give you my heart this week. These four individuals, five individuals, they're human and they're flesh and blood just like you and me. Yeah. But mamas and daddies and church members, I want to tell you, they're going to do things you ain't going to like. Yeah. That's right. And they're going to do some things you're not going to agree with. Matter of fact, they're going to do some things that you're going to bring to the place where you're about to wash your hands of them. But I want you to look in the eyes of every single one of those individuals. And I want you to remember that you at one time was the same way that they were. Yeah. yeah. Amen. That's right. And they need grace in this generation just as much Amen. as you need it in yours. Right. Amen. Amen. They need grace in their life just as much as you and I need grace. That's right. You and I are no better than anybody else. We are flesh and blood. Amen. God had, did not save my flesh. God did not save my blood. I'm a mess every day, just like you're a mess every day. But God has given us grace. Amen. Amen. Young as you can sit down, <laughs> grace will never be arrogant. <coughs> But I'll tell you this, by way of introduction, grace has a crucified attitude. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, by way of introduction, this is about Paul. Paul was in his day one of the greatest, if not the greatest, scholars that walked in shoe leather. He knew the law, he knew the standards, he knew the routine, he knew the rituals, he knew religion better than he did the old back of his hand. But Paul was not getting to heaven because he was religious. Right. Amen. Paul said when I met grace, all of that meant absolutely nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a pile of dung. Amen. Right. Grace. Grace be unto you. This is what he says to Ephesians. I want to tell you something about Ephesus tonight. It, grace will promote you to a position that you could not afford yourself. Paul says I am been made an apostle of Jesus Christ. Yeah. My representation is different. Ephesus was a place that, in the word Ephesus means permitted. Great, Ephesus was a harbor city. But, great, but Ephesus was a place of immorality. Yeah. 
Yeah. Had that temple of Diana or the temple Artemis set up while you pull into the harbor of Ephesus, you'd see that pagan temple where they would go and commit fornication in the very eyes of God. But Paul says, grace be unto you. Yeah, yeah, amen. That's what he said. Can I tell you what y'all be looking for when you pass out your track? Y'all be looking for the one that's got the ear bob in his nose? Got the long, got long, longer hair than your wife? <laughs> got tattoos from the top of his head and the bottom of his feet? <coughs> and y'all just look at him and say, when you go to their Ephesus, just say, grace be unto you. Come here, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you how God appointed me to grace and how God has appointed you unto grace. Amen. 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 I tell you something about grace tonight. Grace, as amazing it is as it is, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Paul says the word blessed is a word by definition to speak well of. That's lacking in our generation. Because I tell you what we want to, what we want to deal with. We want to, we want to get on Facebook as preachers. We want to ridicule everybody else. As Christians, we want to stick our nose in places where it does not belong. Paul says, my business tonight is to bless my Heavenly Father. Because that's what shows people grace. You remember Paul was a persecutor of the cross. Paul absolutely hated the children of God. Yep. But grace made him a preacher of Amen. the cross. Amen. Grace gave him a passion for the cross. When peril of the cross would come, when Paul is being in peril for being a stake in the stand for the cross, grace would get him through the peril. Paul pursued the cross because of grace. Can I tell you, our generation, if you've never looked at the generation of people that were, that were around, if you look at the generation, if you look at the posture of people, their posture, Brother Paul, I tell you what you'll find. Their shoulders are shrunk, their heads are bent low. Because we're living in a generation of people tonight that absolutely have forgotten what the grace of God's about. Amen. Amen. Grace will lift up your shoulders. Grace will lift up your head. Grace will lift up your heart. Amen. Because you know for sure that you've been appointed unto grace. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, you say, well, preacher, that's not fair. I think they deserve vengeance. Well, if that's the case, all of us be in hell tonight. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You better be thanking God you didn't get what was fair. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> You better be glad God didn't come looking for vengeance for you. Right. right. Matter of fact, next time you mess up or you see a brother in fall, it might be good just to get in the ditch with him and help him. Right. Praise the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you, I know what it's like, friend, to be in the ditch and nobody be there to help you. Everybody want to ridicule you, call you a heretic and all those things. I'm going to tell you, if it was me, I'd probably do the same thing, but I don't ever want to forget my grace. Yeah. I don't ever want to be looking for vengeance tonight. We all be looking for restoration. Right. I tell you what, I, I tell you, I'll just be honest with you this week. I wouldn't want to be a, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to be a part of the church. And I wouldn't want to be part of an assembly of people that knew nothing about the grace of God. Yeah, right. amen. 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 I would not want to be a part of somebody when they look down at their nose at me. I wouldn't want to be a part of that either. Church, I'm telling you, we're living. If you want camp meeting, if you want to be revived, if you... Get back in the book and get familiar with grace again. Amen. That's right. Preacher, I want God to change lives. I want my family to be better. I don't want to do the same thing that I used to do. Grace will help you when nothing else will. Amen. You're right. Amen. I want to give you several things real quickly and I'll be done. We've mentioned about the harmony of God and God has been appointed us unto grace. Listen to this in verse number three. We have a reward tonight because of grace. Yeah. My reward is not a mansion. My reward is not walls of jasper and streets of gold. My reward is lining Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Amen. Right. 
Now, if you're going to heaven looking forward to seeing the mansion he's prepared for you, friend, you've missed the whole point of going to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Grace, when you get fixed on grace and realize that the same one that bled and died for you at Calvary, he'll fix your heart to where you can't help but be looking for your beloved on the other side Amen. when you get to glory. Grace will fix your heart on your reward. Right. Grace will help you rejoice. Mm -hmm. Paul in verse number 3 said, Blessing. James Montgomery said this, regardless if you agree with what he said tonight, James Montgomery boy said this, preaching right doctrine results in proper doxology. Preacher, what are you saying? You preach the book right, you preach the word right, your worship and your living will be right. Amen. Amen. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, it's the truth. Yeah. yeah, it is. You say, well, how can Paul... How could Paul worship and how could Paul live the way that he lived? I tell you what he did because he preached it right. That's right. Amen. Because of grace. <coughs> Verse number four, notice what he says. Paul says, according he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. Amen. Because of grace, I have a new robe. Amen. I want to ask you a question tonight. When people look at you, what do they see? When people hear you talk, what do they hear you say? Yeah. Because can I tell you tonight, you and me, outside of His robe, we're nothing. Yes, sir. There's people tonight that say, I wish I could put my family back together. I wish I could do things different. I wish I could be a better man. You can't do it outside of His robe of righteousness. That's right. That's right. You can't do it outside of God's grace. No. Notice what He says in verse number 4, and without blame before Him in love. Can I tell you what grace will do? Grace will give you a new record. Yes. Amen. Grace will give you a new record. <laughs> I'll tell you what we want to do. Good Baptists, hold out, hold out the record. And they say, well, I remember when you did this. <laughs> Brother Paul, I remember the shape you was in. Yep. Jamie, I remember when you went here and you did that. Right. But I'm going to tell you what grace does. Grace says, Eggman. Yeah, that's right. right. Eggman. Amen. Jamie, well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Amen. Paul, I don't remember that spot that you did. Hallelujah. Look, I don't remember when you messed up and you fall short. Now, good Baptists will there, you hide in the barn door. Grace don't know where the barn's at. Yeah. Grace don't have a barn. Grace Lord don't God, have a nail. Yeah. Grace don't have a hammer. Cause you and I have been a pot out of the grave. Amen. Amen. Good preacher, brother. Praise, Praise the Lord. Thank God for the grace. Praise will give you the name. Amen. That's good. Amen. Grace will rescue you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want you to notice in verse number 5 what the Bible says. Having predestined, don't let this scare you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. According to his good pleasure of his will. Amen. Amen. You say, preacher, that's Calvinist doctrine. Paul believed in it. Matter of fact, that's what Jesus did for you and me. That's right. If it's in the book, it ought to be preached. Right. Amen. And I tell you tonight what Paul says. He said, at the forefront of creation, at the forefront of anything else happening, he saw where you were. And he saw the mess you was in. And he set his life. And he set his favor upon you. And has appointed you and me in the grace. That's yeah. right. Amen. Long before you and I ever took part in immorality, there was grace. Amen. I'm going to tell you something a lot of preachers ain't going to tell you. But I believe it's right this evening. You don't ever have to pray for grace. Because grace is always there. <laughs> Yeah. You can't hide from grace. Right. Can I tell you, you can't hide from mercy. Mercy is always there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Grace will rescue you. But grace has made us related.
by law tonight, I don't know if you know this or not, but by law, when a child has been brought into adoption, yeah. mm -hmm. they are given more rights to the inheritance right. than Amen. the blood. Yes, yeah. Amen. When you have to be part of a family, you can get into a family three ways. Through marriage, through birth, or through adoption. We got in all three of them. Grace says, I'll do all three at the same time. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Grace says, you don't have to worry about getting one here, getting one there. That's right. And right before you go out into eternity, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Grace says, guess what, friend? You mine, all mine. Grace says, one day the blood is going to come and get you. There he is, a great flashing floor that is coming. He's going to carry you over Amen. into your honeymoon cabin, Amen. into your mansion. Grace will make you a wife. Grace will make you a son. Amen. Grace will never disown you. Amen. Amen. I tell you, Grace don't know nothing about abortion. No. <laughs> Uh, come on, brother. If you can lose your salvation, God would condone abortion. Yeah. But grace don't know anything about abortion. Grace just operates in the adoption process. Yeah. Regardless of what color you are, regardless of where you're from, what the side of the railroad tracks you've come from, grace says, just come on. Yeah. Come on. I love you. Just come on. Right. Right. You say, preacher, that ain't the church. Well, that's why you're a part of grace tonight. Go to this thank God for grace and you might be able to get on with your bread a little bit more. Amen. Amen. It's grace tonight. Amen. In your church hymnal tonight, there's a song by way of closing. There's a song by the name of Come Thy Found. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Robert Robertson in 1735 heard one of my heroes by the name of George Wilfield preach this message on the wrath of God to come. And he said, I heard him preach, and I found peace in believing. Later on, he would write the song, Come and I Found. And in verse number three, I don't know if you've ever paid attention to it, but this is what he says. And it really ought to be the anthem of every child of God's heart. Yes, sir. Verse number three. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Yes. Amen. 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 Can I tell you, when you enjoy grace, it's a daily journey. Yes. But I hope tonight that's what we need. Amen. It's to get reacquainted with grace. Mamas and daddies, I know you don't understand everything that your children do. And I know the beloved don't understand everything that we do and stupid choices we make. But I'm telling you, friend, we ought to thank God every day for grace. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You won't care me and you won't enjoy this week. Believe it all comes final authority from understanding grace. What God has instituted to us as children of God about grace. Amen. My question tonight is can they see grace in you? Mm. Amen. How well do you know of His grace? Mm. Yes, sir. How well do you know of His grace? Heavenly Father, forgive me, Lord, for where I've messed up. Forgive me, O oh Lord, of my outlook of grace in such a shallow way. Forgive me, O oh God, I pray, of how I've looked at others, Lord, with the eyes of a Pharisee. God, will you help me become more acquainted with biblical grace? Not the outlook of a preacher, not the outlook, God, of tradition. But God, I want to know grace tonight in a biblical way. God, I want you to bind my heart today. <coughs> Lord, I'm telling you, Lord, you know, prone to wonder, oh Lord, I feel it. 
Prone to leave the God I love. Amen. Or by my heart, tired of that grace more than it ever has been before. Father, I pray for those, Father, that you might have dealt with their heart about. Help them, O Lord, and change them. Don't just challenge us, God, this week, but change us. Amen. We love you and we thank you. Have that own way in the remainder of the service, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Grace, grace, God's grace. Amen. Grace that is great in all our sins. Amen. Amen. Don't get no better than that, does it? No, sir. It is saved. Uh, let's, uh, Blake and Little Paul. I, I got to get out of the habit of calling him Little Paul.